So last video we talked about what makes up biological sex and how it isn't always so clear-cut. Roll clip! How can anyone be so sure they fit neatly into one of these boxes? And what if a person knows for sure they don't fit precisely into either side of this table? For example, do you know any guys who can't grow beards? And are you friends with any women who do have facial hair? There are also females with broad shoulders and prominent Adam's apples. Just as there are some males who grow breasts and can't produce sperm. We need to understand in many ways that while there are biological patterns, they are not rules. Let's take it even further, though, than women with broad shoulders and men who can't grow beards. What if a person's biology looks a little more like this? No facial hair, breasts, genitals that resemble a vagina, XY chromosomes, internal testes, no uterus, and little to no body hair. It quickly becomes more challenging to classify the aforementioned person as strictly male or female. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, The reason we only have two sexes is because because no real person actually has characteristics like that, or if they do, it's extremely, extremely rare. I've never met anybody like this anyway. If you feel this way, you might be surprised to learn that about one in every 200 people is intersex. This means they don't completely fit in either of society's ideas of what it means to be male or female. So if your Facebook friends list is at least 200 people long, you almost certainly have met an intersex person. To give you an even better idea of just how common intersex people are, consider that every 1 in 200 is about the same as the number of natural redheads out there. I'm not about to make a video on intersex issues without including an actual voice from the community though. So meet Pigeon. They're going to tell you what being intersex means to them. My name is Pigeon and today we're going to be talking about what it means to me to be intersex. I'm not going to be talking about what intersex actually is and, and my story as much because you can find that all on my channel. But what I am going to be talking about is what the experience is like, more from a subjective uh, point of view. <laughs> to get started, I lied, I'm going to tell you what intersex is. Intersex is an umbrella term for people who are born with sex characteristics that don't fall neatly into either the male quote unquote or the female quote unquote strict binary category. So now that you know the definition, I want to talk about what intersex means to me. For me, being intersex is an alien experience because you live and you operate and you exist and you breathe and you love and you have relationships and you have friendships and you go to work and you create art and you walk your dog and you do all these things that everybody does in a world that was not and is not designed for you. It's kind of like going to a library and there being no books for you. And so say you're a botanist and you want to go learn about botany and you go to the library and there isn't a single book on botany. And every librarian you ask is like, you're kind of weird, I don't like you. Or they're like, I feel so bad for you. I'm so sorry that happened that you came here for these books and they don't exist and you think it exists, but it really doesn't. So that's kind of how it feels being intersex. You kind of live in this library, which is the world, and there's no books for you. There's none. I mean, there's a little bit of Tumblr here and there, and there's some BuzzFeed videos, um, some YouTube channels. But, uh, you know, that's, that's stuff that we're creating right now. But growing up, for the most part, there's really nothing for us. And you can feel like you landed on this planet from another planet and no one understands you and nobody can give you advice or help even doctors like even the doctors at the lgbtq clinics really can't really offer you solid advice usually when you're a minority trying to seek advice or health care or things like that there's just not a lot out there for you on another level that's more about like the relationships we as humans form on this earth being intersex kind of again it makes you feel alien <laughs> it makes you feel like it's impossible to really have a genuine relationship with people who aren't intersex and even who are intersex which i could get into later we just don't all have the same experiences of course so it's hard enough to relate to people but when you're intersex and you try to relate to another human being who is not intersex you kind of just feel lost you always feel lost for people to understand themselves they need to be able to see a reflection of themselves in the world at large and when there's no blueprint for how to exist in this world as an intersex person 
that can lead to a lot of isolation, a lot of sadness, a lot of feeling of rejection and feeling like you're not worthy of other people's time or attention or love because I feel broken. I feel like I don't have everything a quote unquote normal human being has to offer to a partner or something like that. And I think that's the hardest part. I have a barrier or a wall set up because to be vulnerable on a level that it, that requires intimacy with another person, when you feel isolated, alone, in a library with no books for you, you feel incapable of giving another person what you think they deserve, like certain genitalia or certain abilities, such as being able to have a baby, you know, reproductive abilities. I had a lot of uh, forced, non-consensual, non-medically necessary surgeries done to me when I was one, which was a gonadectomy, when I was four, which was a clitorectomy, and when I was 11, which was a vaginoplasty, those three surgeries combined left me with genitalia and a body that I am ashamed of. I don't know if I said that enough yet. I don't think I said it. I feel very ashamed of my body. It's just a whole different level. <laughs> That's all I can say. And it's very, 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 very hard to remove those walls to let other people in and to be vulnerable with people when you feel so ashamed of your body. While I do believe intersex is beautiful and it's a beautiful part of humanity and it always has been and always will be, the experience so far, because the world hasn't yet adapted to the beauty that is intersex and actually it kind of attacks intersex bodies, because the world isn't ready for us, the experience is kind of isolating right now. to be posting a ton of intersex resources and educational graphics and thingamabobs on my tumblr i'll put the link below and i'll see you later okay bye